All right, this is a special edition of the Outer Banks This Week podcast, a standalone that we're doing today. And we're doing it for a major production that's fixing to take place at First Flight High School this coming weekend. It is a stage place. I don't know the right words here. I'm trying to think of them right now. For The Little Mermaid. Now, I got Mr. Blake Taft sitting across from me. Mr. Blake, how are you, sir? I'm great. How are you? I'm wonderful. Now, you are the director, is that correct? The director of this performance? Yes, sir. Okay, now let's talk. Let's start with you. Let's start with the how we decided to bring the Little Mermaid to life on stage, and and talk about all the moving parts. So let's start with you. Where, who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? So my name is Blake. I live down in Avon on Hatteras Island. I grew up on Hatteras Island. Went to high school, Cape Hatteras Secondary School. Graduated in 2012 before going to study theater at George Mason University outside of DC. Got my degree in theater with a minor in event management and implementation. Then came back home in 2019 to help my mom run her restaurant, The Froggy Dog. Ooh, love The Froggy Dog. (laughs) Very good spot. Yeah. So, um, and about a year and a half ago, I approached the principal of the high school, Beth Rooks, about coming on board as a volunteer to help out the theater program. I knew that there hadn't been one for a while. And just I knew that I wanted to do theater again and wanted to bring it back to the island because it was really important to me in high school as well. So we started the program about a year and a half ago after a four year hiatus due to um, Hurricane Dorian in 2019. Um, And then, of course, the pandemic, we just kind of took a break from any live theater in the auditorium. And we have a beautiful space uh, down in Hatteras, but we weren't able to really utilize it. So we came in and we were very successful with a full year of shows last year. And then we had a fall production this past fall. So we've had three productions up until The Little Mermaid kind of building up the program. So a lot of my students prior to the last you know year had never been in a show And I spent a lot of time thinking about what kind of shows I wanted to bring to the island and did a little bit of research on what I really enjoyed and what I thought would really resonate with the local community. And the show we found was The Little Mermaid. It's very much just like the movie. If you've seen the movie, animated or live action, whichever you prefer, it's just like that, only with a few extra songs you may not realize, but it's the same composer who wrote the songs. So even though it may be um, a slightly different melody or something that you may not necessarily know the words to, it still lives in that resonance of just familiarity. It's just so familiar to everyone. And you're like, I know that song, but you've probably never actually heard the song before, but it's a, it's a really beautiful production. And we were just super, we fell in love with the music and the story as soon as we heard it and decided we had to bring it to the island. Such a classic soundtrack too. Okay, yeah. I remember when that movie came out, <laughs> and it was like sha la 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 da, you got to kiss the girl, whoa whoa, and then the whole uh, under the sea, under the sea, exactly part of your world. Like there's so <laughs> many great like little tunes and songs in that in that movie. So you decided on this because of just and and great. Great pick, by the way. You know, we are right by the ocean. It only makes sense to have a nautical theme to it. So I think great pick. And it sounds to me like it was a well-loved production when you did it down at Cape Hatteras Secondary School simply because the superintendent was like, you got to bring this thing up the beach. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us about the moving parts there because there's sounded like before we cut the mics on there was a lot of them (laughs) there are so um it's a big cast Uh, we've got about 28 actors in our cast um and those are students ranging from the ages of 11 years old all the way up to 18 years old because we are a secondary school and we started rehearsals back in january you know really working four or five days a week sometimes six days a week sometimes seven days a week working on choreography working on music working on scenery pieces and costumes. Uh, This show has over 100 different costumes in it, all of which were made by hand by our costuming team. Wow. Um, So there was a period of time the entire auditorium was just covered in sequins and all kinds of fabrics and everything you can imagine to really create these beautiful costumes and bring them to life. Um, And then, of course, there's over 35 scenery pieces that come in and out of the stage throughout all of our transitions and we have to do this with the help of a lot of people so in our creative team we've got we've got costumers we've got we've got carpenters and scenic painters and vocal directors and music directors and all these people that kind of come together 
to create something big. And every show we've done, we're like, oh, we don't know how we're going to top that. And then we did. And then somehow we do. And it seems that with this show, we really just we hit our stride. We kind of reached that spot where everything just worked so beautifully. You know, we sold out three out of our four performances and just completely packed the house out. I can tell you it was so well received by so many members of the community and so many people that told us we wanted to see it, but there were no tickets available. We just couldn't get in to see it. So Superintendent Bass Knight came down to see the production on Sunday afternoon. He had to sit actually on the side of the audience. There were no seats for him. We had sold all the seats. Unfortunately, like superintendent came into the school and we didn't have a seat for him. We pulled out a folding chair for him and he and his wife sat on the side and watched the show. And they were so incredibly moved by not just how magical the show was and how hard the students and the faculty had worked on this show, but how it was received and how moving the production was itself. Right after the performance, he approached me and said, would you be interested in doing an encore performance? And I said, absolutely. These kids deserve it. And I would love nothing more than to give them one more chance to perform it again. Um, And he went and did a lot of legwork up at Central Office to kind of make this work and make the schedule work to get us into the First Flight High School Auditorium uh, this coming weekend. So it's really amazing. I've never heard of a high school that gets to take their show and take it to another high school and perform it. It's not something that you really hear a lot, but I think that the work speaks for itself. And um, I'm so thrilled to be able to be doing it again in a slightly larger venue. So let me ask you this. You've got, of course, Ariel, Mm -hmm. main character. (laughs) You've got Ursula, another main character. Now, do you have a flounder? Oh, absolutely. And you've got Sebastian. We have everyone's favorite characters in this show. They're all there. And even some characters you may not have realized that you just absolutely love. You know, we've got Chef Louie. We've got Scuttle. You know, we've got all these great. And then there's these characters that you may not realize how funny they are, are the Mer sisters. So you've got all six of the other daughters of Triton. And they kind of make up this kind of... 60s girl group kind of very very boppy and also kind of catty at the same time it's very funny because you know this is played by a group of girls that are in middle school and high school sometimes i when we were rehearsing i had to tell them okay ladies you gotta dial it down just a little bit it's a little bit too catty you know because they're so animated and so into their character there'd be times we go off on a break after rehearsal and i'd be like okay Mer sisters, turn off, turn, off. <laughs> turn it off, you know, we got to get it back girls. Uh, but you know, it, they just have such a fun time with it and they become the character and inhabit that character on the stage. And the character is just so likable by everyone. That's so cool. So there's a little taste of what you can somewhat expect coming up this weekend at first flight high school. So give me the dates, give me the mm-hmm. times and everything this weekend that this is going to be taking place. So it's going to be this Saturday, May 18th at three o'clock PM at first flight high school. Tickets are available now um, for pre-sale or at the door. You know, we're hoping that we have a really big turnout. We want everyone to come out, even if you don't have a kid in school or don't know anyone in the production. This is just a production for everyone. Live theater has always been designed to be experienced live. It is an experience for everyone to get to come out and go and go to the show and enjoy it together and get to just really have a good time. You're going to laugh. You might even cry. You might be really surprised by how you respond to the story. And I think that it's such an enriching experience to be able to experience theater live. And this production definitely checks all of those boxes and then some. Tickets. You said you can go ahead and you can buy them early, correct? Mm -hmm. Where can you do that? So right now they're on sale um, at First Bank uh, in Kill Devil Hills at the front office of First Light High School. Then down on Hatteras Island, they're available at the Froggy Dog Restaurant in Avon, United Bank in Buxton, and then the front office at Cape Hatteras Secondary School. Very nice. Very nice. So you have more productions that you're looking to do in the future. Uh, you want to maybe chat about that or is that something we need to kind of just wait on? Because I, <laughs> I got a piece of intel from another individual who is <laughs> off mic right now. And I'm not it's it's not my business to share that piece of intel. It's not my well, it's not I my, will tell you that we are um, we're we're definitely looking at future productions, you know, as we're as we're finishing this very last performance of The Little Mermaid. Of course, we're looking towards the future and where we're going to go next. And we have been making some big plans. 
And I will tell you that the next production is going to be something remarkable. It is, we recently acquired the rights to a production that is currently running on Broadway as one of the first high schools in the nation to perform this show. We're one of 19 schools in the country that won the rights to produce this immediately while it's still running on Broadway. So So I'm not going to give away the title just yet. But um, definitely keep an eye out because Cape Hatter Secondary School is doing some big things. So there's might, might be a little bit of a clue. I'm, I, I don't know how accurate it would be, but if you were to Google currently airing Broadway shows or currently <laughs> running Broadway shows. I'll give you a hint. It's a play because we usually do a play in the fall and a musical in the spring. So there's a show currently on Broadway. You know, it is it is it has been released nationwide. There is a press release about it. If you looked up enough about Cape Hatter Secondary School, you might be able to find it. But we haven't really started all the fine work and details on that production just yet. We're finishing up with The Little Mermaid, and then we're going to start that process very soon uh, because that's coming up this fall. All right. Good stuff. Well, Mr. Blake, uh, thank you for coming in uh, again this coming weekend. You said 3 o'clock Saturday. Is there, 3 o'clock is, Saturday. Is that, the, is that the one and only? The only performance at First Light High School, and I, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss it. It is going to be something for the record books. Excellent. Well, Mr. Blake, thank you for coming in. Uh, good luck. Uh, what do they say? Break a leg? Break a leg. So can, <laughs> can I say that? You, well, you're the director. Can I tell the director to break a leg? Is that is that proper? Oh, absolutely. All right. Well, you break a leg this weekend, and if you have not gotten your tickets, you need to do so ASAP. That way you can be a part of the magic that's going to take place at 3 o'clock on Saturday afternoon at First Flight High School. Again, thanks for coming in. Thank you so much for having me.